Hi guys! Mayong Adlaw. Welcome back to my channel. For today's video, my presentation is about finding the future value and present value of general ordinary amity. This is the continuation of the lesson about finding the future and present value of simple ordinary amity. So to start, let us have the lesson objective first. At the end of this video, you are expected to solve word problems involving future value and present value of general ordinary enmity. We will differentiate simple ordinary enmity from general ordinary enmity. For the prerequisite skills, we have number one, solving word problems on simple and compound interest. Number two, finding the future value and present value of compound interest. And number three, Solving problems on the future and present value of simple ordinary annuity. So let us have our review first about the definition of annuity. I already have presented this definition about annuity when we discussed or when I presented about the simple ordinary annuity. But to review, an annuity is a series of payments made for a time interval which is usually stipulated in contract. The payments are made by installment and does not vary for the duration of the contract. Examples of annuities are loans, car and home mortgages, insurance, pension and retirement products, credit cards, and other debts. So this is the general definition of an annuity. When we say general ordinary annuity, it is an annuity where the compounding period is not the same as to the payment period or the payment interval. Unlike with a simple ordinary annuity, the compounding period is the same or equal to the payment period or the payment interval. But for the general ordinary annuity, the compounding period is not the same as to the payment period or the payment interval. So I already have presented to you what do we mean by compounding period and what do we mean by payment interval? Later, I will be presenting to you some examples about that. So let's proceed. This is the formula in finding the future value for general ordinary annuity. As you can see, this is much more complicated compared to the formula for future value in simple ordinary annuity because I have plugged in here all the components of the formula. Okay, so as you can see, we have here the periodic payment, then we have the additional component here, which is the P over C. Later, I will be giving you what do we mean by P and what do we mean by C. Now, we have here the formula in finding the present value for a general ordinary annuity. So if we are going to compare this formula to the formula for finding the future and present value for a simple ordinary annuity, this is much more complicated. But we will take this one by one. So from this formula, we still have here the FB is still for the future value. The PB is for the present value. Here, this is your PV. Then the PP is the same. We have the periodic payments. And we have here the additional P, additional component in the formula, which is the P. The P here is for number of months in payment interval. So when you see payment interval, for example, if, the, if a loan is paid, semi-annually that means twice a year when we say twice a year that means semi-annual that means the number of months in semi-annual is six so the number of months in payment interval if the payment interval is semi-annual so the number of months for the payment period is six months but when you say the payment interval is quarter that means the number of months for that payment period is three months because you will have to pay four times a year. Another is the C, which is the number of months in compounding period. For example, the compounding period is annual, meaning once a year. So there are how many months in one year? Of course, there are 12 months. Or the compounding period, for example, the compounding period is quarter or compounded quarterly. That means the number of months in the compounding period is three months. The same as with a payment interval. Okay, let's proceed. The same R is for the interest. Time, the T is 
time in years, and of course, n is the number of compounding periods. So let's proceed to example number one. We are told to find the present value of an ordinary annuity of 3,000 pesos payable semi-annually for five years with an interest rate of 4.8% compounded quarterly. So if we are going to analyze the problem, of course, it is very clear that we need to find the present value. Now, the payment interval is semi-annual. That means twice a year every six months. Then the payment interval or the payment period is different from the compounding period because the compounding period is quarterly. That means every three months. This is what I mean about the number of months in the payment interval and the number of months in the compounding period. So for the given, we have here, of course, the periodic payment is 5,000. Our rate is 4.8% or 0.048. The compounding period is, of course, quarterly. That means the amount is compounded four times a year. Then we have the number of years, which is five years. And this time, the the P, which is equal to six months. When I say six months, where did we get six months? Because the number of months in the payment interval, our payment interval is semi-annual. That means every six months. That's why you have here six months. And of course, the number of months, which is letter C, the number of months in the compounding period. Compounded quarterly, that means we have three months. And this time, we have to solve for the present value now, since we are to solve for the present value, of course, we will be using this formula. As you can see in the formula, we have here the P over C, the number of months in the payment interval, and the number of months in a uh, compounding period. So we have this formula, and we will substitute these values to the formula, then we will simplify. So our periodic payment is 3,000. Then we copy the 1, we copy minus, again we copy 1, plus this time our rate is... 0.048 so that's why we have here 0.048 and the n is quarter we have 4 then n in the exponent so negative 4 times 5 which is the number of years is 5 then the same happens in the denominator we have copy 1 plus the rate is 0.048 over 4 then our p the number of months in a payment interval is 6 months and c the number of months in a compounding period is Three months because that is quarter then we copy minus one we simplify this fraction here and also this fraction so we just simply copy 3000 1 minus 1 plus 0 0.048 divided by 4 is 0 0.012 then we have negative 4 times 5 we have negative 20 the same happens in the denominator so, so 0 0.048 divided by 4 is 0 0.012 then 6 divided by 3 is 2. That's why we have here the exponent 2. Then next is the next is to add this number and this number. So this will become, we copy 3,000, we copy 1, we copy minus. So 1 plus 0 0.012, of course, that will give us 1.012, then raised to negative 20. The same happens in the denominator, 1.012 raised to 2. This time by using a calculator, we raise this number to negative 20, so that will give us 0 0.7878. So we copy 1 minus, we copy all, we also copy 3,000. Then 1.012 raised to 2, that would give us 1.0241. Then we copy minus 1. This time, we subtract 1 minus 0 0.7878, that would give us 0 0.2121. And of course, in the denominator, we subtract 1.0241, that would give us 0 0.0241. Then, we divide this numerator by the denominator. So this will give us 8.8050. And lastly, we will multiply this number, 8.8050 to 3000, that would give us 26,415. So this is now the present value of the given ordinary annuity. You have paid 3,000 semi-annually. Now, I would just like to clarify that there are a slight difference in our final answer if we do not round off our number on this part here. 
In this case, we have rounded off our number to four decimal places. But if we will not round this off, there is a slight difference in our final answer. But the concept is they are just the same. Unless if the value has a bigger difference compared to the final answer. Our present value is 26,415. Now let's proceed to the second example. You have invested 20,000 pesos in an account every end of the year at 3.6% compounded semi-annually. You are to find the money in the account after 10 years. So it is very clear that we need to find for the future value. This time, you have paid 20,000 pesos every end of the year. That means once a year, every end of the year. That is the payment interval or the payment period. But the amount is compounded semi-annually. That means your money will be compounded twice a year. Okay? So the payment interval is one year. The compounding period is semi-annual. So in one year, we have 12 months. In semi-annual, we have 6 months. Okay? So let us proceed to the given. Of course, our periodic payment is 20,000. Our rate is 0 0.0. 0.036 or that is 3.6%. Then the number of compounding period is semi-annual or that is 2. Then our time is 10 years. Then of course our pay is 12 because we have paid once a year and there are 12 months in a year. And of course our C we have semi-annual so therefore we have C equals 6 months and we are to solve for the future value. Now, since we are going to solve for the future value, of course, we will be using this formula, the future value. So we have the periodic payment and R over N raised to NT minus 1 and so on. So we substitute these values to the formula. So we have 20,000. We copy the 1 plus our rate is 0 0.03 and our N is 2. That is semi-annual. Then we raise our n is 2, then the number of years is 10. Then the same happens in the denominator. So rate is 0 0.036 divided by 2. Then we have the p is 12 months and c is 6 months, that is minus 1. We divide 0 0.036 by 2 and also in the denominator. Then we multiply and divide. This will become, we copy 20,000. 0 0.036 divided by 2 is... 0 0.018 then 2 times 10 is 20 the same happens in the denominator of course we have 0 0.018 12 divided by 6 is 2 then we copy minus 1 then we add this number here of course we will have we copy 20,000 1 plus 0 0.018 of course that will give us 1.018 and we the same also with the denominator then we raise this number to 20 and of course we raise this number to 2. So this will become 1.4287 and the denominator 1.0363. So we use a calculator on this part here. Then we subtract this number. So 1.4287 minus 1 is of course will give us 0 0.4287. The same happens in the denominator, which is equal to 0 0.0363. And we divide. Using a calculator, of course, we have 11.8099. And we multiply this number to 20, of course, that would give us 236,198 pesos. This is now the future value of the account after 10 years. So the future value. So that's it. Before I go, let us have these practice problems. Number one, find the present value of the general annuity of 5,590 pesos paid quarterly for seven years if the interest rate is 7.2 compounded annually. And number two, your father applied for a loan for a house and lot and it is stipulated in the contract that he has to pay 15,000 pesos every end of the quarter. That is for 25 years. If the interest rate of the contract is 4.3% compounded annually, find the total value of the house and lot. So that's it. I hope you have learned something. And do not forget 
So please subscribe, click the notification bell, like and share, especially to your friends who are incoming grade 11 students. Thank you and God bless.